Hi everyone, I'm back and um, I promised I'd show you something else uh, that you can do with this uh, encaustic and that is, um, this is a background is a print I made on the uh, on the computer on photo paper and as you can see there's a really thin layer of uh, wax over it and then it gives you an illusion of that it's all made in wax that's something that you can do if um, if your drawing skills aren't that good and then I'll show you how you this one is old so this one is uh, a couple of months old and as you can see on the butterfly or the moth I should say because it is a moth um, it's all dull but if you just take a piece of cloth And you can see it popping up. It, it gives it a little more definition. But I'm only going to do the, uh, the moth. And then you can see the difference. See that? It's almost like resin. That's how you can polish it up. When it's all done and when it's, when it's cured for a while. And you can do that the whole painting or the whole piece. It's no problem at all. Just make sure you do it with something that is lint-free and doesn't, you know, give you those little uh, hairy things that stick on it. But as you can see now, it comes, totally comes to life. It's almost like resin when you look at it. This bit here I didn't do yet. See that? That's still dull. So then when you... Just polish it up a bit and there you go and it's all shiny almost like it's wet so that's how you finish off your piece now you have so many possibilities with this uh, medium and that's something that um, you can you know if you have a, a day that you don't feel like doing much you can get on the computer, go, go to Google and Google encaustic art. And just to help you on your way, because I think she is the, um, the most experienced and she has amazing uh, stuff. All she does is encaustic. So everything you see from her is with wax. And that's her name, Alicia Tormey, and or uh, Torme or something. I, I can't pronounce it, I, I'm not sure. But if you look her up, and I'll put it in a little closer. There you are. Write it down. Then you'll find out she does a lot of flowers, which are really beautiful. And she always uses shellac. Shellac, whatever you call it. Here it is. Encaustic shellac. Now, this stuff is a little funny. And... I think, you know, if you use it for the first time, I'd buy some because, you know, you want to be on the safe side that you have the good stuff. But you can also buy it, and this is what it looks like in dry form. And I'll give you uh, an idea. My whole hands, look at that, uh, covered in shellac because I was dinking around with it. But I'm not going to show you because it's totally uh, messed up. But see that? That's the shellac. So usually you put it in sort of some sort of a spirit thing that it um, dissolves into it. Then you can color it with um, Indian ink. I think they, uh, I heard them say, and that's about what happens. But I'm sure that she makes her own because um, the stuff she uses is totally, totally awesome. Just put that there. So that is really awesome stuff that she does. And she gets all these beautiful, um, that's my dog kind of running in. Uh, she gets these beautiful cells and um, they go so well with those flowers that she makes that it's just one perfect piece. Now go over and look what she uh, made and you'll be amazed. Now because this is a sort of a wrap up video, I just wanted to give you another couple of ideas to do because I know uh, Christmas is coming along. A lot of kids are um, on vacation I guess. and what I really like, you know, if you have a spare time, something like this, and it looks something, 
it, it looks like, you know, that is so much work, but what it is is just, you know, getting a little bit of Zen time. I did this um, when I was on vacation, and I just sit on my on the couch and have have the TV on, and my husband's sitting in the other chair, and I just, you know, do all these little uh, circles and make them join together and do different things. But anyone can do this. You don't need much imagination to make one of these. Just think beforehand, before you start, you can put a couple of circles on the paper and that's gonna, then, then gonna be your starting point. And promise me, or just <laughs> promise me, um, believe me, when you start doing this, you go into Zen mode, really you do. And it's just, you know, when you get to the end of it, you're thinking, oh, why am, why am I done? Because I wanna do some more. But it's so much fun to do. And even for children, if you do it, just not maybe this detailed, but a little bit bigger, and then come back in and color it, it's so much fun. So this is also something that you can do if you have absolutely no drawing skills, you can absolutely do something like this. And when you've colored it, Another idea you can do is, you know, do the background first. Do a uh, beautiful background and uh, watercolor will uh, comes into mind because it's so uh, subtle. And then you put this over it, it's just, you know, instant art. Now, this is sort of what, I've, what I'm talking about. So you do a background, then you put all these circles on it. And this time, these are much and much bigger. So, you know, even if you don't have that much time to do something like this, you can do it like this. When, once you're finished with the, uh, all the circles on it, then you come in again with your watercolor and give the circle a little bit of darkness here on the inside. And then all of a sudden it pops up from the, uh, from the background. Then give it a little bit of that, you know, shine, so that it sort of gives you a feeling of, uh, uh, of a raised surface. And, well, it's cute. Depending on the colors you use, you know, you can make something that would look very, very pretty on a wall. So that's another idea. Then, if you are a little bit better in drawing, you can take it to the next level. And this was gonna be a, a turtle. So I'm not, I haven't finished it. And I started this a long time ago, but I just came across it, I thought I'd show you. Um, see this turtle, you make the outline and it is easy. And if you can't even do the outline, that should not withhold you from doing something like this because what you can do is get something that looks like this turtle and just outline it. So print it on your printer and then just make the outline. Then you don't have to draw, all you have to do is color it with watercolors and then come in with a white gel, uh, gel pen and you can start doing all the patterns on top of it. And this too is, uh, you know, it gives you so much peace and relaxation because you're, you know, once you're starting here, you know you're gonna do that all around. So you go totally into Zen mode and, um, well, it just gives you a lot of energy when you're doing things like this. Now, if you wanna take it to the next level, um, what you can do, and that's a pretty nice project too, that is something like this. Because I want to keep it close to, um, you know, what we're doing. What we, um, what appeals to us is all the, the cells and the little circles, so I want to keep it close to that. And as you can see, this is all circles, but this, this is paper marbling, and I have two videos. If you search my channel and you put in marbling, you'll come across those two videos. One is showing you a lot of um, the pieces I've done, and one is explaining the process, how to do it. And as you can see, this gives you, well, really pretty uh, results. And it's very close to what we do with all the cells. And um, I, will, I would be happy to show you how to do this from A to Z if, if there's a lot of people who would like to get into this because um, this also is a very, very cheap, um, cheap hobby. You can, you, you can make it as expensive as you want. All you really have to have is what we all have is acrylic paint. 
then uh, some uh, wallpaper paste and you can make your own little tools I've shown you that before with toothpicks you just you know stick toothpicks uh, on a piece of cardboard and you have a comb that you can comb through the paint so um, you know because of the uh, holidays coming up I thought you know I'd just show you a couple of ideas what you can do with the kids and stuff but just you know it's not just kid stuff because paper marbling is wow that goes way 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 back now if you want some ideas what you can do is uh, go online and then you can do marbling paper marbling and you'll find a lot of videos but if you run out of videos you can also look for this Ebru and that's the Turkish name for paper marbling and what they usually do is they do a background like this and then they put flowers on top and usually it's carnations or something like that tulips but they put a lot of flowers on top with little leaves and just watching those videos is you know when I watch them I don't want to do I don't want to do art because I get so relaxed that I just think you know oh, just let me sit here it's so relaxing but it's a it's a really beautiful way of um, uh, manipulating the paint and seeing everything flow and and you know it does beautiful stuff and for people you know who are on vacation who have a a job that you know takes a lot of energy this is something fun to do and you could just clean it right up because you know it, it's not that messy you can just take little cups and make your paint and uh, use it for a couple of days even um, the uh, the bowl where you put that um, wallpaper glue in you know you can keep it for a couple of days and you can have some fun with it so I just thought I'd show you all of that now so you have just a little recap you have your Alicia Tormi for the uh, encaustic and then you can go for paper marbling or ebrew for this kind of stuff and if you want to do something like this all you need is a little bit of watercolor paper and if you can't draw like this all you have to do is go online look for a turtle if you do turtle drawing you'll find a, some sort of a turtle drawing but all you want is the outline so you just print it out and do the outline and then you come in and you do your own colors and your own patterns on top and there are so many if you look uh, for Zentangle they will give you so many ideas to do some sort of uh, embellishment on top of something like this uh, you'll have a field day I'm, I'm pretty sure because there's so many ways you can do this so that's uh, a lot of fun so I want to thank you all for today it was fun doing this and tomorrow I am going to go back to the basics of pouring because um, I want to thank uh, Judy I won't do your uh, last name but Judy you know who you are Judy has sent me uh, these and these are the interference uh, colors from Golden and I'm going to do a, a pour. Um, I've tested them. And I'll show you what it looks like. This is what it looks like. So these are the colors. See how when the light catches it, the colors come through. And then when you just put them down like this, you almost don't see color. But then when the high, light hits it, you see all the colors. So um, I, she, she sent me uh, six of these tubes and I'm really, really very grateful that you did. And tomorrow I'm going to, uh, first I'm going to sit down and look at those uh, colors I put on the paper when they're dry. Because I want to just, you know, soak up the colors. I don't want to do a pour with only interference paint because I think that would be a little blah. But I am going to color match these interference colors and then do a pour. So every color will have one interference and one normal color. And then when I put them together in the cup and do my thing, then I hope they'll pretty much come together. 
So um, this is going to be a lot of fun. So uh, the first video I do tomorrow is all about pouring with interference colors. And it is brought to you by Judy. So Judy, thank you very much. You are such a sweetheart to do that. So uh, that's what we're going to do. So for now, I'm going to uh, sign off and clean up a little here. Oh, no, I was going to show you something else. Sorry. Okay. Ta-da. Now look at the shine, because <laughs> I'm going from one to the other. Okay, guys, bear with me. Um, this was where I did the background. I did a background, and there's a video of the background, but then it turned into smush. And what I did is I took my spray can, this one, the spray can silicone, I sprayed over it. But it kept moving and moving and moving, and I was afraid to lose these cells. So what did I do? I came in with a, a spray can of uh, um, acrylic lacquer, right? Sprayed right on it, and look what happened. It just stayed like that. That is so funny, and it is shiny as I don't know what. You don't even have to do anything to it anymore because it's so shiny. And... I sprayed that acrylic lacquer, I sprayed it in the wet paint. And what it did, it sort of stopped everything from moving, as you can see here. Let me get you cl very close. Can you see it? Isn't that sharp? That is as sharp as it comes. That's funny, isn't it? So I, I never, because this is a really a very cheap um, canvas, and I really wasn't expecting it to do that, because I thought, you know, when you spray it in the wet paint, well, it, it'll crack or it'll do something weird to the paint, I'm not sure, but I was just, you know, fed up with it moving so much, so I just sprayed it on, and look what happened. It's beautiful, it really is. So this was um, with the testing of the, um, of the new pouring mediums. This one, a lot of people wanted to see it. Yes, I put dots on it. I couldn't help myself. I wanted uh, a lot of uh, dots. And I'm still not ready with this one because, as you can see, the cells are beautiful. Let me get in close. There you go. Beautiful cells. And what I do like about this is... Um, it has a sort of a motion that I normally never do. Whoops, there we go. But what I really wanted was a lot of these white dots. And these are the bigger ones, but I, I want to do add a lot of small ones too. L sort of like the, um, the oxygen in water, you know, sort of bubbly. Giving it just a little more um, movement. That, that was what I was going for. So this one I'm going to finish off tomorrow too. I'm going to add all these little tiny little dots. And I might even add a little bit of glitter here and there in the dots because I think that might just, you know, add to the uh, illusion of air. I don't know what you call it. This bit here, I really love this bit. Look at that. Let me get you in there. Those are some beautiful cells. And this was all done with the... Um, experimental pouring medium so that was that this was the uh, first one that I did with the Naples yellow and um, the testing pouring medium number two which uh, which gave me all these outlined cells that you can see right there there you go a lot of outline cells which I really like and of course it depends on the colors that you put together that's a that's a given because you know every single color they act all differently as you can see there's some glitter on top I put some on there and once I varnish this one it'll be uh, it will uh, look really beautiful but I'm really really ready to go back to pouring I did the little ones 
because there was a lot of people asking me to show you the uh, dried pieces and these are totally dry so they're dry and that's you know I don't really lose the uh, cells and I don't know why people keep asking me show the show the dried ones because um, you know the cells don't disappear if you mix your paint right they will not disappear and this was the colorful one as you can see all the uh, all the uh, cells are still intact and this one is ready to be varnished Then we made like six million of these and these also still have all the cells intact as you can see. Let me get you in focus. There you are. And of course we have many, many of these that I did. I did the little round ones and all sorts. This one I think you can still remember this one. Here it is. There are a few air bubbles, but other than that, you know, I think uh, people expect me to, I don't know, lose the cells or something like that. But if I lose cells, people, I promise you, I will tell you if I do, because uh, it, that is a very important part of this whole uh, thing, because if you pour something and you get all these beautiful cells and the day later everything's gone, I will be the first to tell you because you don't want that. See, even the blue ones, uh, oh, there's a lot of paint on here. You can almost peel it off. Oh, no, I think these are two. Oh yeah, two. But I will show you up close. There it is. And I promise it, it is exactly as when I swiped it and when I thought, you know, I'll just, uh, <clears throat> that's it, I'm going to stop. That's how it was and that's how it is now. And there is nothing sneaky going on behind the scenes. If something really happens that I don't think is uh, worth uh, your time, I will absolutely tell you. Just going through a couple more. Oh, the, this is the one I made the print from. It did move, that's, that's because I didn't have it flat, but, you know, other than that, that is my own fault, you know. That's maybe uh, what some people come across when they um, are doing their um, art and putting it away to dry, that they forget to level out the table or the canvas or whatever, and if that happens, then automatically everything will sort of start to uh, come to your the side which is lowest which is uh, pretty uh, normal and what happens then is it'll pull all your cells down and if you don't have them have the exactly the good mix i can imagine that you lose cells when it's not totally uh, level but you know i i don't know how many i made i think i made 600 of these things oh this is one of the uh, smaller ones where you all thought it looked like a flower see that well that's enough of it I did have some with a really pretty glitter on it this one has full glitter this is really cool but that's oh here's a little bit of glitter see how it sparkles this is a little bit of that holographic glitter this one too these are gonna be so beautiful with um, when I make necklaces out of them and that's really going to happen. I don't think I've even told you, but I've, I've got two weeks uh, vacation. So I'm two, off for two weeks. So i got a lot of time to do uh, a lot of artsy stuff. And that's what we're going to do. Okay, well, you get the idea. Um, just, uh, just as a, uh, a double... Uh... Oh, wait a minute. This one was nice, too, because I put some... Uh there that's some primary elements in there that was really cool you can't really see it but in real life it's really pretty 
Okay, Pro I promise you if ever I come across something that, you know, I'm doing something and all of a sudden all the cells disappear or something like that, I will absolutely tell you, I promise, because it's very important to, um, if I'm showing you how to do things and, um, and behind the scenes I'm losing cells or something like that, that would, that would not be nice of me to say, you know, just do it like this and look how beautiful and then the next day I got nothing. I'd never do that. So believe me, if something happens, I'll tell you all. Okay, guys, I'm going to wrap this up and be back tomorrow. So thank you all for watching. I hope I gave you a lot of inspiration to do fun projects with your kids or just by yourself. And um, I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful holidays full of Zen time and artsy time and that you all are really happy and Let's do that and go into the new year, 2018, feeling fully energized and ready to make some more art. So thanks all. See you all tomorrow. Bye-bye. Love you all to pieces. Liebe euch alle.